I mean, she chugs mouth like she sips mouthwash after chugging vodka. Like there's little tiny things. And it, and remember in the beginning with the little girl when mm-hmm. they go into the bathroom, the mother makes sure to go out of her way and it's like, you know, when I was a kid, I used to pee in the woods. So you give them an excuse why they're going to this out of the middle of nowhere bathroom. And it's kind of weird. You in, in this latest Halloween, he would have just murdered him. But in this one, Michael just takes the keys. And she sees him walking out, and he leaves. Like she and, lets them out. And the Rob Zombie bathroom scene oh, is so. Gosh, yeah. Or, or great just, acting though. Great wow. acting in that scene. No, but, uh, but but you know what's funny is that because of the other movies, even though I know what happens in this one, every time I see that bathroom scene, and I and I know for a fact, if you say are they going to die, I'd say no. But I get so nervous for them watching that scene, right. her and her little girl. It's a great scene. And let's if we, if we can humor me here. The, those three bathroom scenes, I think, are an important contextual sort of parallel here because we're talking about the Rob Zombie winch, which is so completely just like Rob Zombie, and that's what it is. But the twenty 20- that's Daniel Harris, scene. correct? That scene? Uh, in the ba- no, no, not in, no, not in the bathroom sorry. scene. No. Not Halloween two. Uh, Halloween Rob Zombie's first Halloween, which was the bathroom scene between Joe Grizzly, I believe. Uh, Joe Grizzly at the the truck stop. Okay. Which, very violent, very you know kinetic energy, but. The Halloween H2 approach, right, which I agree with John here, you, you feel so nervous for them because it's it's a mom and her kid, and what's more vulnerable than that? And it is terrifying. It's almost like one of those um, sort of urban legends you hear about, like that just a guy in a mask came by and stole your purse and your car, and he didn't say a word, and there was no confrontation. It makes you wonder why. Like any other person, you know, a thug on the street would have probably put you, you know, stuck you up, right, for your car. And it didn't happen that way. And I think that's part of that sort of classic Carpenter um, cat-like sneakiness uh, you get from H2O. And and certainly in the 2018 iteration, which I do like, um, I have a, maybe more of a problem with him being unmasked for so long. But the idea that he would scare them f- before killing them, right, with the team, <clears throat> it's a very cool scene, but it's a different kind of Michael, right? Like it, mm-hmm. it's, less, it's less sneaky and... Uh, you know, trying to scare somebody, maybe or scare somebody in a different way. But, you know, it, this Michael of 2018 is saying, yeah, you better you better be nervous because I just pulled this person's teeth out and really screws with them in a different way. So I don't know. I think there's a lot of different textural notes to compare between the two. And I didn't notice the the, the third, uh, the Rob Zombie Halloween um, bathroom scene until you mentioned it, John. But I, I think if you're talking about tracing two, di- three different, I mean, they're all called Halloween. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just very different versions of Michael Myers, especially. Uh, just yeah, I don't know. I, that's a great point. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, because because well, before this movie, anyway, even though we're talking about this movie, before this movie, most of these movies have built their way towards, well, six really crescendos it. But let's let's not take the six druidic story. <laughs> right. But we 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 built up 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 eventually towards Michael Myers just being this embodiment of evil. Right. But it was a focused evil, and we see that focus in this movie. Yeah. Like, like you said, that mm. that hunting, maybe that's why it, 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 it spared or perhaps did not even acknowledge, if you will, that mother and daughter in the bathroom. It was focused. It had a purpose. It had, yeah. it had a prey. It was foraging for something specific. Then you get Rob Zombie. He gave us the beast, and I just mean pure – Entropy. And then I think the newest movie tried to marry those things. It wanted to cherry pick yep. characteristics of both. I'm not going to say I didn't like Halloween 2018, but I had difficulty finding my tone and my mood because I felt like they couldn't decide on what their Michael Myers was. Instead, they literally Frankenstein and said, I'm taking exactly these pieces and exactly these pieces and forcing them together. And this is how they'd work together instead of modifying and molding that clay a little more. I don't think they molded it enough. That's a great point, John. And I actually didn't, that did not occur to me that sort of hybridization between a zombie Halloween, Michael Myers and a, and a traditional one. But I, it, I did notice that after I revisited Rob zombies and you're right in the 2018, there's just moments of those brutalities that fit in so squarely or could have fit in so squarely right. when he yeah. when he steps on the doctor's head like what that belonged in a zombie movie for sure but, yeah, but, but of course in zombie movies you wander into the 
berserk. And again, entropy is a word that comes into play or, or almost a, a Cthulhu like madness yeah. can, can take hold and you lose all tact, but it makes sense to that theme. Yeah, and in Shiro's, it's just completely different. You're right. He's got that sort of tunnel vision going on where he's locked on, and yeah, he's still playing tricks, but you know, he's not he's not wasting his time with over theatrics. Although I will say, in contrast to that, maybe I'm nullifying my statement just now. The scene where he sort of creates a hanging makeshift jack o' lantern of the girl. Okay, I was really just about to bring that up on this conversation. So. Yeah. What do you guys think goes through this particular Michael Myers head, which is the timeline of just part one and this movie? Right. What goes well, through wait, the two technically? Yeah, two. Cause, no, cause, no, no, because yeah, cause she sister. watched because she watched him burn. Well, yes, but they never found a body. They said, and also they acknowledged the Loomis, but, but, but they that's, all, that's part one. Right, but if you're Mark just said, like if you're acknowledging the sister connection, that didn't come into play until Halloween two. Yeah, but, when Marion says it's a Loomis in the car. the events didn't happen in her backstory in this movie. She never went to the hospital. She didn't watch him burn. Well, I, in the montage in the in the cold open, they show her the same scene from Halloween 2. She's wearing, the, like, the gown or whatever. Okay, it just doesn't work in yeah. the way that... Yeah, I, I was going to say, like, I think it's fair to ignore okay. it. But, but, so, okay, but, but so, the one, two... Yeah. This I mean, timeline, if you will, right. though, what what goes on in that? Not the four, five, six, very brutal Mike Myers, or differently brutal, right? Uh, what goes through his head? Why does he hang? Now, and going wrong, in part one, he leaves a body on display. He cuts some eye holes fall, out. Right, someone falls through a doorway. He leaves it there to do that. Uh, so there's a little bit of feistiness. But with that girl whose leg, oh, my God, that leg and the dumbwaiter, yeah, yeah. right? I love these brutal leg scenes, but but she yeah. she when she is hung there, and you yeah. see that brutal leg break again. When he in the beginning, jo Joseph Gordon Levitt is dead. Nurse goes towards the back door. He must have literally been holding that guy because he wasn't leaning on the door. Yeah, you know, I was I was always confused by that too. Um, he must have literally been holding him or literally just killed him. I, I whatever the case, he is setting up these shocks and we can yeah i get it's a filmmaking tool it's the director having some fun we're not really thinking when we're doing those things in filmmaking about what michael myers is thinking or his motivation but when th then when we get to that hanging effigy if you will that is a deliberate uh warning of things to come i've been i've been thinking pretty hard about this and about this thing this, both, this hanging both of those. so all right, so I guess I'll build. The first kill that is a little, a little silly is when he stands the guy up outside the door. But I guess for him, when he, he falls through, she backs up, and then he walks through. So it, it's it's to elicit fear, but it's also not a waste of time to, to have that kill, at least to me. Maybe he thinks she'll go through that door, he wants to scare her, he's a jerk. But when right. he hangs her up on that cable, the, I gotta tell you, the only thought that's my least favorite part of the movie, the only thought that goes through my head is how strong is that light? And how did it, like that's that fair. really takes me out of it? Because you know my dumb head. I'm like, how much weight is on that? What kind of ceiling is that attached to? Who tied that lamppost into sure. the ceiling to hold a 110 pound dead weight human well, if, being? It's yeah. not. It, yeah. it, it's one thing I would say that goes against the movie to me. That, so, this sorry. is how I know that Mark is more handy than me because I would never consider the, the the holding capacity of that wire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe this is our duty as podcast guys talking about a movie that's this old, but I, I don't know. I think the motivation is a lot simpler than, I guess, the suspension of disbelief you got to provide for him rigging a, a girl's body to a, a light. I mean, he's always done that. That's his that's his M.O., right? He, that's what makes him different from Jason or, or Freddy, right? He, he plants little surprises. It's trick-or-treating. It's no different. And I don't know if there's anything beyond that. Like, yeah, he's after Laurie. Or, or is after Jamie or whatever movie you're talking about, but I think that's always been his thing. He always gets off on that. He's a, he's on a Halloween four where he's leaving bodies. He's sitting in a chair with a shotgun. Like he just part of that evil. If you're talking about pure evil, it's not just about death. It's instilling the fear before, you know, making good on it. Do you think he doesn't kill Ronnie because if they see that he's dead at the front desk, that'll give them away. Keeping him alive makes it seem like everything is normal. I don't I don't know if that was decided. That might have been like the women in the restroom. I don't, think there was a, I don't think it was a conscious decision on Michael's part. I think that was one of those 
one of those things where he maybe maybe Michael saw this from afar. He saw this collision happen, right, where uh, the Arkin character shoots him, and then he saw an opportunity for a nice surprise tip of the hat to Halloween too. That's what I like to think, but I don't know if there was a conscious decision on Michael Myers' part to spare Ronnie. Well, I, see, I'm not saying he chose to spare. Sometimes I think that he doesn't acknowledge. He's Maybe. not worried about Ronnie? <laughs> well, we don't know what his psychological state or or faculties are. Well, I guess you could mm. use the argument that he does just sort of slip by the gate early, and if he really wanted to do Ronnie, and he would have probably taken care of that then and there, but, you know. I think this is one of those classic screenwriting decisions where they were like, well, we want to use this character later for a device in the plot. So, you know, having Ronnie killed off at the gate wouldn't really give us a whole lot to work with. Got it. And do you know what I like uh, going back to, and this is unnecessary, and maybe I feel like I'm, I'm jabbing at the 2018, but I like the agency of Michael in H2O. He gets in a car, he drives there, he finds it, and he goes to kill his sister. In mm -hmm. Halloween, Sartan frees him from the bus. And then he's walking in the street and he gets whacked by a car and then they just dump him in the back seat and they bring him to Lori's house. And then he gets tricked. I feel very like puppeteer. Yeah. Puppet. So and it, I, in a way that Six was, which I had problems with, but you're right. It, it, he does sort of lack the, the true villain nature, right? If you want to talk about this movie and who the true villain is, like Michael's, an, uh, you know, a dog off the leash, but who let him free? It's this corrupt doctor. And I think that sort of muddles the water for me. Can I ask y'all something stupid and not stupid, but uh, off topic in, in Halloween 2018, there's a, the famous one take shot. And for me, I'm really against one take shots if they don't further the can story. I, can I pause? So I, and maybe some of our listeners haven't seen that movie since it was released in theaters. Uh, could you, could you give me like a, a 10 yeah. second pitch, like the elevator pitch of that scene? So he walks into this backyard and then he kills a woman making a sandwich and then he walks further. Then he kills another woman in a house. And it's a one-take shot of him just walking through homes murdering people. And Mark so, technically, you know, and me working on sets, I've done one-take shots before. They're a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And they are, and at, and at night, they're a nightmare. So, mm -hmm. I'm not arguing the technical merit. I'm not arguing the acting, the focus pulling, the camera work, the steady cam work, which is a nice callback to the panic glide. Right. I get it. But watching that, it just felt very... If, if a wonder doesn't have a point, I don't care for it. It doesn't, a wonder needs to make a point to me. Like, mm -hmm. that's, like, and I felt like it was, there was no point. Yeah, look at our wonder. That's why I felt. Complex. Yeah. And honestly, Mark, and I don't mean to say this is not correct, but when I watched it again recently, I, people like to call it a one shot. The whole sequence, as it were, isn't actually. It stops after the hammer in the kitchen and cuts. And it continues from there. But people talk about this sequence, as it were, as being one of their favorites, because uh, John, uh, to your point, this is this is his return to old trick or treating mischief, the right? Halloween to S kill, Correct. right? Yeah, so this is a return to that, and I like that. But I think I agree with you, Mark. That the idea that they were sort of trying to ape the first two with this tracking shot—I'll I'll just say that. There it uh, is. Yeah, I, I think that. Uh, your mileage varies, but yeah, I feel like they could have maybe gone a little bit further with it because people talk about it, and maybe maybe that's the problem, right? Maybe that the discourse around that scene is overhyped, but it, you know, for what it is, I, I understand why they put it in there. I just feel like they could have taken it a little further, and I hope they do for the next movie because they keep implying that it's going to be so big and all this and that. I'm really looking forward to this second one because they got the the reboot call out of the way, and mm -hmm. so hopefully now they can go out there and just go for it. Uh, and yeah, do well, that. I, I guess not to counter your point again, but they have brought almost everybody back, right? They got the original sheriff back, Charles Cyphers. They got Jarvis, Tommy Marianne, Jarvis, right? Marion, and they got even these really minor characters like Lonnie, Lonnie's maybe advocate or whatever. Um, just these sort of characters mentioned in passing from the original movie are going to be part of this. So, you know, we might not get out of the woods yet on this rebuquel or whatever. Um, but I do hope they take some some new directions. Because it does seem like they want to make it bigger, which I'm making me a little nervous, actually. Well, aren't those next two movies going to come out, like, in the same year? Not anymore. They're shot at the same time. Okay, uh, but maybe they'll be six or eight months apart then? I, I, their plan was a year. I think oh, they were, so maybe a Halloween and a Halloween. Originally, of course, we were going to get the, the new one this October and then the last one next October. So I'm, I'm sure they're just bumping that by still a year. A, still a very fast turnaround, though. 
So I, I got a, I have a technical question about uh-huh. the one shots. So I every now and then really appreciate these single shot, these long tracking or single shots. But I 